Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, join me today as I walk through some updates on Riath, our BMOD autocross car. Uh, I am currently nine months pregnant and do have a baby any day now. So this might be my last opportunity to get you an update before we have a newborn. Um, over the past few months, I've been very busy working on overhauling our entire coolant system and our uh, braking system, installing new pedals, a new fuel tank, and lots of other fun stuff. So let's, uh, let's check it out. So first I'm gonna start off with the problem that we are trying to resolve. Uh, last fall, we got the car out for three outings and had overheating issues each time despite the weather only being in like the 50 and 60 degree range. What we believe the culprit was, was the degas bottle was immediately uh, where the coolant exited the block at the hottest point. And we think that it was basically getting overpressurized and uh, sending coolant to the overflow bottle, which was set up as a one-way valve uh, with the line routed to the top of the bottle, which meant that as the coolant spewed into it, there was no way for it to return back to the system. Then as the car started to cool down, it would just suck in air and would create a boiling over situation. So my goal was to reconfigure the coolant system more like most OEM systems. I also replaced all of the hoses with some from Aeroflow, an Australian company that I found that had really good pricing. Another thing that I did was when I inspected all of the aluminum coolant pipes, I noticed that they didn't have any beads on the end, which would increase the risk of a hose popping off. So I took some uh, electrical crimping tools and modified them slightly based on a YouTube video that I found. And I was able to hand bead the ends of all of the pipes. You can see here that I've also installed a SPAL fan. It's gonna blow about 1300 CFM. Um, and I did my first ever carbon fiber project, uh, making this radiator uh, fan shroud. You can see that there's quite a bit of area here for air to get under the radiator. We're gonna add some ducting to the body to uh, help force air into this area, and then it'll be pulled through the radiator using that fan. So, the right side of the radiator here is the hot side where it's exiting out of the engine. You can see over there, coming over here to the radiator. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the cool side first though, which is exiting out and going down into the uh, firewall area. The headers are currently out of the car because I just wrapped them. Um, coming around here, and you can see that it is routing up to the degas bottle that is now on the cool side of the system. Um, as it exits the degas bottle, it's coming down here to a, an electric water pump, which then is going into the engine. So the electric water pump is gonna be wired in with a smart controller uh, so that we can run the coolant through the system even when the car is shut off. Over here you can see the Davies Craig smart fan controller. Uh, this is gonna allow us to have the fans kick on whenever the coolant is reading over uh, any set temperature that we want. Um, and there's also an override feature so that we can have the fans on manually. But given that we have a newborn on the way, figured having a smart fan controller that takes care of it automatically for us is definitely the way to go. So if you peek in here, you can see the thermostat. Um, so this is the hot side of the system. Um, we have the coolant uh, temperature gauge right here so we can get the most accurate reading. Another thing I did to help the system is I uh, drilled the thermostat. I just added some small holes so that at all times it's gonna allow some coolant to be passing through. Um, this should help keep flow through the system uh, for a little bit improved cooling. Here you can see the new overflow bottle that I installed. So this overflow has uh, ports running from the radiator cap, like a traditional car would have, another one running from the degas bottle up here, and a third line uh, venting from the thermostat. 
and all of them are connecting to the bottom of the reservoir. So in the case of anything getting burped into this bottle, it will be able to be sucked back into the system rather than pulling air in. Another fun fact on this radiator shroud is I actually learned how to do CAD for the first time. Um, I had never, I'm not, I'm not an engineer, I'm an accountant. And so I set out to learn a completely free uh, CAD program called Tinkercad and uh, spent <laughs> quite a few hours uh, figuring out how to make my own uh, shroud. Now, unfortunately, um, while my shroud would have worked, uh, Andrew's was, of course, better. Something, something, you know, 15 years of mechanical and electrical engineering experience <laughs> in the field and access to solid works. Um, so we did wind up going with his design, but it was still fun to know that I could have done this on my own using a completely free CAD program. We used a vacuum bagging process, uh, which neither of us had ever done before. So we were able to buy all of the materials online and uh, basically use the 3D printed mold from the CAD design that we had made together and uh, applied the carbon fiber and various uh, strips with some epoxy and then vacuum bagged it keeping it sealed for about 24 hours and uh, we were able to pop the mold out with some difficulty um, and got this very incredibly lightweight carbon fiber shroud out of it another project i've been working on has been installing the tilton pedals and redoing our entire brake system. Uh, this one is still in progress, but it has finally, um, the, the end is in sight. Um, the pedals are installed. I had a little mishap with them. I uh, measured just a tiny bit off, and basically what wound up happening is the front structure of the nose cone um, didn't quite go tall enough for the new Tilton pedals. What that basically meant was we chopped off the nose cone and welded in this new plate here that's sitting behind the master cylinder reservoirs. Um, much taller plate, which let us get the Tiltons installed correctly. Another thing we're doing as part of the pedal install is uh, redoing the entire brake line system. So rather than having soft lines running all the way to the rear brakes, we now have hard lines running back there. Um, in addition, we are converting the clutch to a hydraulic setup. So you can see there's a hard line running there. Um, and then on top of that, for the braking system, we added some Willwood residual pressure valves and this large sensor that you can see here is going to be for our race capture data system. It's going to let us have brake pressure. Basically just have to secure some lines, get the reservoirs installed in their final locations, um, along with all of the assorted hoses. And then for the clutch system, we still have to fabricate a, a bracket for the new pull style hydraulic slave cylinder. The thing we did here is replace the throttle cable. Um, I found that the original one that came on the car was fraying um, in addition to feeling very clunky whenever you pulled the pedal. So we made up this new little uh, bracket to install the new one. Um, Andrew machined the attachment to bring it to the tilt and pedal and we wound up with about three inches of travel and it feels butter smooth. The cable that I found is off of a Yamaha jet ski of all things, and we got extremely lucky. And it was the right length and also had this 90 degree bend uh, as part of it. And it fits the OEM Honda Airbox like a factory throttle cable for 30 bucks. Welcome to the mod car life. A couple other things I've been busy with is getting our new fuel tank installed. Um, this is obviously not quite complete, but you can see that it has been relocated back into this side pod here. And the filler neck is going to come up 
out of this port. I have it all taped over right now just to keep things clean and the fuel lines will be attached in here. The filler neck uh, is going to be located in the same as the original so we will be able to have it come up through the bodywork where it was before and let us fill the car with fuel from outside. Part of the reason we took on a new fuel tank is last fall when we went to take the car out for a few outings, we found that the fuel bladder that was installed in this side pod was leaking pretty badly, uh, which is clearly not safe. Um, so at that point we took it out and as a temporary fix, put in a one gallon cart uh, fuel tank in the engine bay. And that got us through our fall events, but we wanted a more permanent solution that would let us get back to at least a two gallon capacity rather than the one gallon, which, and that combined with the surge tank over here will be good enough for us to get through around 15 runs without needing to refill in between. Here's a quick view inside the side pod. You can see the gas tank and the battery that I relocated from inside the passenger compartment. By relocating the battery, that's gonna let us be able to move the seat into a more centered position rather than offset to the far right side like it is right now. As you can see, there are still lots of odds and ends to finish up on the car. Um, big one is the rear differential that Andrew is working on, um, along with finishing up the rear braking system, uh, which I don't have rear brakes to attach to quite yet, but hopefully we will have that in the next few weeks. Things are coming together and we are getting pretty excited to hopefully be able to get going on our season um, in the next month or two um, with the small, small asterisk of having a baby that might impact our schedule just a bit. But it's going to be a fun adventure and we'll see what this season brings us.